right, we have, let's say, 25 minutes to go. Maybe just stand up for one second, everybody, just like one, one second. Just get up, everybody. You know, just like hump around. <laughs> just loosen your legs a little bit, hug your neighbor, clap on your shoulder, say you already, or almost made it. <laughs> All right, breathe some air in it. All right, you now you might have a seat, might not be too long. You feel refreshed? Everybody's deep standing is not refreshed enough. All right, thank you very much. Sit down, please, again. I <laughs> just wanted to wake you up because the atmosphere, just feel that when the oxygen is absorbed by all these very active brains here in the room. We have two more talks to go, ladies and gentlemen, and we're going to talk about the role and the potential of IYG original action centers in the first place. In case of the next talk, the title itself is self-explanatory, also for the scientific layman as I am. Role and Potential of IYGU Regional Action Centers. The talk is going to be held by Luis Osterbeck from Portugal, University of Tuma, and uh, followed by Elena Enriquez from Portugal, University of Coimbra. She directly follows with the Regional Action Center of Macau, Coimbra for Western Europe. So I made one announcement for both of them. Please welcome first Luis Osterbeck. Good afternoon. Uh, I thank you first for having woken up everyone. I, uh, I'm very sorry. I, I think me and Elena will try not to divert you too long from the reception, which is uh, one of our main targets this afternoon. Uh, okay, I managed to change the slide. First, uh, I wanted to say that I think we all, many people already said it this afternoon, but, but it's very interesting to understand how we got here today. We got here today because Benno and a very limited number of people, but Benno, someone said already this afternoon, doesn't like people to saying no to him. So uh, in the end, people accept. And th there we are. We are here. And, and we have... We, we have an, a little bit crazy agenda. Now, this is a little bit of crazy people. Adama Samasiku, also a few years ago, said, why not a world conference to relaunch the role of human sciences in our society? And there we have it. It will be 2017. But then, when we work in the, in, in the business, and the people in this room work in the business, we know we are very few. And this uh, says about, about everything, about what's, what's the process of globalization. We wouldn't have IYGU, the World Conference of the Humanities, and processes like this organized as they are being organized some 20 or 30 years ago. It would be impossible. And uh, in fact, the interaction between the local and the global has one side which is, has been framed with the, 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 the sentence, think global, act locally, but requires today an understanding that the future will be more and more to also be able to think local, meaning thinking of the needs of specific people, not only about general theoretical ideas, and acting global. Because that's what we are doing here today in Vienna. It's a global action. And it's possible with the type of development we've had in the most recent years, it is possible to act global from very local and formerly very remote areas. So the first thing is why in this process. Why does it make sense to have this IYGU? Many people mentioned it before. I think we are living in an age of a required greater integration, integration of processes. A society in which people do participate I don't think it's that much a matter of discussion if there is more or less democracy. It's, like, it's like a little bit like 
are the people escaping from war going to come to Europe or not? They are. It's, it's, it's not under discussion. What's, the only doubt is how they will come in, not if they will come in. And the, the, the problem of our society today, it's not if people are going to participate or not, but is how they will participate. Because they're there, they're in the streets, in all the countries, including under dictatorships. But at the same time, there is a growing alienation. And so the capacity of people to take decisions is undermined. And I say people, I include the academics in universities, often thinking of their very important disciplines and forgetting about what they mean, in fact, in terms of an epistemological transdisciplinary framework. So if we build from this, we understand that we have to move away from a problem approach, trying to solve problems one by one, but understanding, as some people already mentioned today, that we, we need to change the mindset. You mentioned that. And for, I believe largely is to understand that we don't have problems because we always solve problems. But we have to learn again that the difficulties in life are about dilemmas. What are we ready to accept even when we don't like it that much in order to get something in the future? And this brings about convergence, not unique thinking, but a convergence of, of people and ideas. Based on what? Based on very simple ideas. And that's a, an important novelty of IYGU. Who is doing this? Okay, we have the academic world, of course. But we don't have alone the academic world. And one of the most surprising things is that probably for the bad reasons, probably because people are finally understanding through climatic and environmental disasters and through terrorism and things like that, they, they are ready to accept that something different has to be done. And they try to take action. And yesterday I was with Elena in the airport to come over here and we decided to go on the web to see what would be there related to global understanding in Portuguese. And the, the few images you see on the top are some of the initiatives that were launched in Portugal in the last months without our knowledge. It's simply universities, schools, even a bank, and the idea of a bank was for me particularly nice because I'm going to address this bank to become our sponsor. But in fact, different organizations read the website, understood what is in there because the initiatives are good, and they are setting convergent actions in the direction of global understanding. And what's very interesting is that some of those are coming from natural sciences, from engineering people, from the bank system, from human sciences, of course, from social care. And all of them are bringing together, for example, the word science, knowledge, society. It's interesting. It, seem, it shows that IYGU is not a bad idea, and it's working. How is it working? I think it's no longer important to make publicity of IYGU, of the idea of global understanding. So many people worked in this direction in the last few years. So many good examples we have. The, the, the planet is not that bad because of the lack of people thinking about these things. And what is novel about IYGU is not the idea of bringing together an, an, an understanding of the relations between the local and global. What is new and important is that it is a framework for action. And it's even for us, I think, a little bit surprising how fast it works. So now that we will have, this is beyond our initiative, it's beyond our, even our wishes. There will be, in 2016, probably thousands and thousands of initiatives on global understanding that will escape, thank God, our control. The point is, how do we 
move from that, which simply expresses a growing awareness in society about the need to change, how do we build from that in order to create a new positive tsunami, if you want? And uh, I believe that the regional action centers provide three fundamental things. Flexibility, diversity, and convergence. They are, in fact, potentially, they can be, they're not necessarily, but they can be, a sort of bottom-up structuration of a very open, very fast acceleration was mentioned before. We need to be fast, but we also need time to, to, to think. The way to do that is to allow each one to follow its own pace. The web itself can be fast, whereas each one of you can take its own time. For example, I, this is not moving fast now. So where this slide says about a large part of our problems today. See, we have a lot of regional action centers, but look where they are focused. So this is clearly, this slide, a target for us. There will be more by the end of the year. And some people today spoke about perhaps a decade or perhaps a century of global understanding. More and more, I think, ICSU, ISSC, the International Geographic Union, certainly the, the Council of Philosophy and Human Sciences, I think we will use global understanding. We will use the words and we will act through that, bringing together our different initiatives. And so it, it can become a very soft and very powerful engine. We will need to put more dots in that map, for sure. We will need someone to learn me how to use technology also. And I think like that, we can have a flow. A flow that is bottom up, that is taking advantage of all the scientific reasoning and development of the last centuries. But on the other hand, building from everyday's needs. That's what Alan Scott was showing. We're not talking in IYGU a lot about complexity. Of course, we're talking among us, but we're talking about eating, drinking, sports, things that everyone understands. And if everyone understands the, the very simple way that each person in the planet understands that life is not about problems, it's about dilemmas. It was again mentioned this afternoon that the primary concern for someone who is deprived of everything is to be accepted as a person. And to change this, I think it's largely what the regional action centers can do. If they don't try to become institutions, if they don't try to become the all same sort of heavy bodies, administrative bodies, if they're flexible, open, providing guidance, but encompassing all sorts of different approaches. They will contribute also to something I heard today and pleased me a lot. We don't need to be tolerant. In fact, we have to fight against tolerance and to make people understand again that the great strength of humans is diversity because the most intelligent humans always understood that they might be wrong. So having different alternatives, it's very clever. Uh, and so I think that the regional action centers are, of course, the backbone of IYGU this year, but they will become eventually also the backbone for the World Conference of Humanities which will be an, uh, certainly uh, an event not only of SIPSH and UNESCO, but also of ICC, of ICSU, of Future Earth, because that's what we need. We need to bring people together. And, and you see, 
I think this was the last slide. Uh, well, hopefully by the end of the year, I will learn how to use these machines. Uh, but, uh, ah, I knew there was another slide. And this slide, I want to re I, I will read the poem because I think it, it says something very interesting. It was written by a Portuguese poet, but in South Africa where he lived, Fernando Pessoa. And because we launched this in Durban, I already mentioned it in, the, in Durban. Uh, it says, in fact, I, I won't read, but I say that we are always tricked by our perceptions. And that's, that's what's basically in that poem that each one of you can read. So let's be a little bit humble. Let's face that by the end of the year, we will not achieve what we expected. We will have something else. But this something else is built on the base of something which is positive. It goes in the good direction. So we can be comfortable about it. And uh, I think now Elena uh, will show you something about Portuguese. Guten Tag, wie geht's? Danke schön. And it's finished my speech in German. <laughs> now I'll try to communicate in a very strange language for me also, the English. I'll do my best. First, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Professor uh, Ben Vellen for this kind invitation. Uh, and I'm very happy to be here and share with all of you uh, our recent experience about creating a regional action center. Um, the aim of this brief talk is to encourage everyone. The ceremony will finish by the end of the day and I would like you to think about returning home and do the homework do everything you can to create a regional action center, especially where it is much more difficult, for instance, in Africa. Well, I will share with you, with you the making of, of our regional action center that uh, is totally, totally in action now. As Luis said, things are happening uh, even without our uh, knowledge, and that's good. Well, this is uh, uh, fortunately out of date. I just wanted to show where we are coming from, Western Europe, Southwestern Europe, and the idea of uh, creating and designing uh, regional Action Center um, started with Luis and for the moment it is launched in two institutions. The uh, Massão um, Institute of Terra e Memoria and the Geosciences Center of the University of Coimbra, one of the oldest universities in the world, as you know. So these are the two stakeholders because we need stakeholders, a minimum of organization. But it's the only, I'm oh, sorry. We had the chance to, to, uh, to, um, to have as patrons two very important persons. This is symbolic, but we also live of symbols. And symbols can catch the attention of many people that in a first approach, they don't care what is global understanding about. On the left, we have uh, Ramos Horta, who is Nobel Prize for Peace in 1996. He was one of the fighters for the independence of an ex-Portuguese colony with the help of Portugal and other countries, the uh, East Timor Republic. And on the right, we have a very known 
communi science communicator in Portugal. All the children know because he talks about dinosaurs. But he had a very important role in the preservation of the geological heritage in Portugal. He was a, 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 a pioneer. And he appears on television. He writes many books of, for different audiences. Then we have the core business, the exec executive committee in relationship with partners, institutions, and a national program board. We think that people are more important than their institutions. And sometimes the headers of the institutions, they accept, but they have difficulties in putting a program in action. So we could count on many people from all the country and from different areas of knowledge. Thinking about information actions, education actions, and research actions. So on the, on the left we have what we, we may call the symbolic uh, approach to the committee, and on the right the operational level of the committee. The executive committee is uh, part of an old team and where now it is incorporated the team of social sciences and human sciences. I'll talk about this later, but as you can see, gender equality is achieved by hazard and very different play, uh, people from different places and different areas of knowledge. Uh, I have worked a lot with some of them during the International Year of, um, of Planet Earth 2008 uh, and we have a fantastic experience as, and as we say in football, in a good team, don't move, don't change anything. So the core business of the International Year of Planet Earth was complemented with people from uh, geography, of course, social sciences, of course, and uh, from um, urbanism, the three uh, last on the right. And we have the support of the, the National Commission for the UNESCO. It's very important because the politi politi political field, we need to implement many actions. So, we all share in the executive committee one vision. Communication is crucial to pass, to, to, to pass the message of the year. And one of the first things was to create, to create, to demand a logo in Portuguese for people and especially students achieve to identify with the, the keywords. Then a, 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 a website in Portuguese. And also we hope soon, and this is Dr. Alan Scott, we'll have to talk about it later. We would like very much to have a translation into Portuguese of the brochures as we did with the International Year of Planet Earth because due to the acceleration we work, people have no time to read things in English. I mean the real people, not the academics, the, the teachers, the students, the journalists. They don't have time. So that, I think it's very important to translate into our language to approach with the, the people. Finally, we are involving many organizations through people that really want to work. Sometimes it's not the president, Sometimes it's not the director, it's someone that we know that he wants to do something. So that includes municipalities, 
that includes museums, geoparks, of course, units of research and de development in universities mainly, schools, and the media. And uh, it, for the moment, for instance, schools are in advantage. Schools are moving very, very fast to this idea because during the uh, decade of sustainable development, the National Commission of the UNESCO every year tried to put schools working on the international year. So that network is prepared already in Portugal. They are always expecting next year is year of what? And so many of them are already working. Here you have the people in a second row working with us, journalists, uh, universities, research centers, schools, many schools, uh, Science Alive uh, centers that, which are very popular in Portugal, the geoparks, as I told you, and it will grow up, I'm sure. And for the moment, you have the spots where we are we have um, uh, initiatives in action. And we were even able to reconquer Spain. S some of the Spanish colleagues are working with us. It's the revenge of <laughs> our history. But because the secret is to, 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 to make a good uh, regional action center, the secret is always the complicities among the people people are more important than institutions. Institutions are very important, but people are much more important. So for decades, I work with people of the University of Complutense of Madrid, the biggest university in Europe. So it was easy. Would you like to? Yes. They even didn't know what, what it was about. And they have a very interesting program in, um, in action. Well, what will we do? What are you going to do tomorrow when you return home? Very easy. There are so many networks. There are so many institutions. There are so many programs that already have financial support. You have to convince the leaders to do that, to implement that program, but with our logo. It's very easy. Some of the, someone of the group, we will study the material. And certainly we can achieve our goals without spending a lot of money because many of these networks, they do exist already. They are all concerned about sustainable development. So, it's just one more step. Well, this is not up to date, it's impossible, because during our uh, uh, trip to here, we have more, more actions. Many schools involved in uh, uh, school contests. Uh, even the, 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 the president of one municipality has uh, guaranteed a boat trip in, in the river Tagus in Lisbon for uh, the winners of one competition. So, like Luis said, people think, people want to do things. We only have to imagine, have some imagine, imagination and create a good core with people of different knowledges and share with respect, of course. So up to May, we have already an agenda from uh, uh, research uh, uh, program to communication to education, but I'm, I must say due to our National Commission for the UNESCO, the schools are taking advantage and they have a lot of programs and actions. 
Well, next challenge, as I told you, the translation into Portuguese. This is very important, especially taking into account that 2,080 million of people in the world speak Portuguese. And most of that people is in South Hemisphere. They can easily, well, not so easily, but they can use the web to learn. Many people use the, the, the web uh, more easily than, than uh, buying books. So our, our idea, again, is to translate into Portuguese the brochures and put it of free access on our website and on the international website also. On the left, you have already some uh, initiatives that uh, are already uh, scheduled. And that logo with uh, a wheelchair, this is our colleagues from Spain that have, an, uh, well, most of them belong to the University Complutense of Madrid, but they formed an association of handicapped people and they have lots of activities for special groups in uh, uh, science. This program, uh, I think uh, it will be very nice to, to, to accompany. And we have some media with us already, especially newspapers, I'm finishing. I would like very much to invite everybody to visit us virtually speaking, of course, and here you have our logo in Portuguese and our website, you are all welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we have 15 more presentations now. Well, you think it's a joke? Well, yeah, you made it. Yeah, the entire input was given the entire afternoon. I thank you for giving me the honor and letting you ship through the vast ocean of deep knowledge you've been sharing here. Uh, I have only some personal wishes to offer. Well, the first one is um, that you successfully come together. Whenever you come together, that you really communicate in the way that you did it today and that you have the appropriate media coverage because that is really a unique project. And thank you for, having me the, for giving me the honor to lead you through the afternoon. All the best for you. Now I'm going to teach you some old Latin. You remember the word prodesse, which means to be useful. Um, the third person singular means prosit. It may be useful. And that is actually the sound you make in German. When you cross the glasses, you say post. It sounds a little bit like very simple, Bavarian in a so-called way. Barbarian, more or less, but it really means may everything we do be useful. So it may be. Thank you very much. <laughs>